Good morning, everybody. This is Kendra, and I'm coming to you live this morning from our classroom here at Pine Needles Colton So in Rochester, Minnesota. And we are doing our um, October, can you believe it's October already? Our October Embroidery Club. And for this month, we are gonna be making these really cute little pumpkins that I have sitting alongside of me. The freestanding fall floral pumpkins from OESD. So this is um, the instructions that we printed off. So I'm super excited to do these because they are super cute and super fun. And your kit included the CD with all of the designs on there. And these designs um, and these projects, they come in multiple formats. So you can sew them on any machine that you have at home. Um, so if you are brand new to joining us for our embroidery club, this is a club that we try to do monthly. We did take the summer off, but we are back again doing monthly embroidery club videos this fall. And um, if you enjoy machine embroidery or if you know somebody that does enjoy machine embroidery, you can share this video with them and let them know that um, this is something that you really enjoy and you, um, we have really fun projects for you guys to stitch out at home. And it also teaches you a little bit more about your embroidery machines as well. So it gets you a little bit more comfortable with all the features and everything on there. So I see people are jumping on and commenting, so that's great. Um, so in your kit, when you signed up, you got the designs and you also got some fabric. So um, you also got your name in a drawing for some door prizes because you know all of our embroidery clubs we do give away a lot of really cool and creative and fun door prizes as well so as we're going through and we're drawing for door prizes if you're wondering well how do i get into those door prizes call and sign up for our next month's embroidery club and you will be in for those door prizes as well so let's get started the first thing that i want you to do is go ahead and take out your cd open it up, put it into your um, computer, and we're gonna download those designs off of your CD, and we are going to put them onto your USB stick and bring them into your sewing machine. So go ahead and do that. The other thing that you'll notice when you open up your CD is that you will see there is a PDF in there and it says thread chart. That is this little booklet here. That is, you can print it off, you can put it in your page protectors if you have a three ring binder, or you can spiral copy it if you um, have that ability. So what this does is it prints off everything that you need on your thread chart. So it will give you all of the designs that you see here, and there's different sizes. You can see this pumpkin is a little bit smaller than this one over here, and then they have different designs on how the flowers stitch out onto those pumpkin panels as well. So the ones that we are doing today are the small pumpkins, and that is back here on page 14. So if you look at page 14, the next thing that you will need to do is take your fabric that is in your kits and you wanna go ahead and pull that out. And what we need to do with that fabric is we need to cut um, for our small sections, four by six. So we actually need six of those, and it tells us right here in this little box right here that we need six designs. So we need four, six, four inch by six inch pieces. And then we also need for the base, one five by four inch piece. So you wanna go ahead and cut those, and I've already cut mine. So um, this is what they, the four by six looks like, and this is what the five by four looks like, so you'll have little pieces like that. And the stabilizers that we are gonna to use today for this project is, first of all, we are going to use from OESD, this is, let me pull this out here, it is Stable Stick Cutaway from OESD. So this is a cutaway stabilizer. It's pretty heavy duty. And like I said, it's the Stable Stick. So it has the, um, the sticker back where you peel the paper away, reveal the stick. So of your Stable Stick Cutaway, you are going to want to cut um, your stabilizer so that you have two sheets for each panel, so you're gonna need 12 four by six inch pieces. So they're gonna look just like this here, and I've already cut mine. And then you're gonna need two pieces that are five by four inches for the base. So once you get those all cut, 
what you need to do is you need to go ahead and lay, place two layers of the stable stick cutaway on the back side of your fabric. So we can go ahead and do that now. So I'm just gonna lay this on here. So there's one layer on the back of my fabric. And then I'm just gonna peel that paper away. And now I have layered my second piece of the stable stick cutaway onto the back side of my four by six inch piece of fabric. So you wanna do that for all six pieces. <clears throat> and then you want to also do that for your five by four inch piece for the base. So I'm, I have those pieces already cut of the stable stick, the five by four inch pieces. So we're gonna just go ahead and stick those on there as well. All right, so now I have both pieces of my stable stick cutaway fused to the back of my base fabric. So I can just set those aside and those are all ready to go. The next thing that we wanna do is we wanna cut the stabilizer for our hoop. So the stabilizers that I am using for the hoop is Aquamesh. Again, this is by OESD, so this is just Aquamesh. It's a wash away stabilizer. And we are also using Badge Master. Again, it's by OESD. It's also a wash away. Um, it's just a like a thin film. Well, it's a little thicker than the thinnest film that OESD makes, but Badge Master is great. It washes away and then it leaves a little bit of starch into your projects to help with that freestanding lace. So what we want to do is we want to take and cut a piece of stabilizer for the size of our hoop. So I have one cut already of aqua mesh, and I also have one cut of the badge master. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna layer those up. You want the aqua mesh on the bottom, the badge master on the top, and then you're gonna go ahead and hoop that into your hoop. No fabric yet at this time, so we're just gonna go ahead and hoop it, and I've already got mine hooped here. So this project does take a little bit of time, so to keep our video from going six hours or more today. We're just gonna do one of each of the panels so that way you can see how this works and then I'll show you how to put it all together. So we're gonna hoop the aqua mesh on the bottom, the badge master on the top so it looks just like this. Then once you have your designs already on your USB stick, you're gonna take your USB stick and you're gonna take it over to your sewing machine and you're gonna pull up those design files. So let me show you on the simulator here what that looks like. All right, it took just a minute for that to pop up. So when you go to your sewing machine, it's gonna look like this. And what you need to do is, <clears throat> you wanna tap on, so I'm showing the 590 simulator for the Bernina. You wanna tap on the home screen. You're gonna go to the embroidery. Make sure that your feed dogs are pressed in. And then at the very top, you're gonna to select the little icon that looks like a USB stick. Here's my folder for my freestanding um, fall, fall floral pumpkin. So I'm gonna open that folder. On the Berninas, it's the EXP format. So we're gonna choose the EXP format. And then what we need to do is on our instructions, let me bring you back here so I can show you. In our instruction booklet, 
it tells you right above each box what design number you want to look for for the correct size for your project. So what we want to look for is the 12928-13. So I'm going to go back to my simulator and choose that one. So we might have to scroll down a little bit. And it's right here. So this is the one that we want to choose. So now it's showing me that this is my design. It's in the large oval hoop. I'm going to change this to the straight stitch plate because that's what I have in. My feed dogs are down. Get rid of that. And through my needle, I am going to start with the magenta thread color. This one doesn't really matter as much which one to which thread color to put in there. But when you're ready to start sewing, you're going to just hit your needle, make sure that the embroidery module is attached. And you're going to let it do its thing. Put your hoop onto the machine. And you see your first line that you're going to stitch out is this shape of um, your placement line. So what you want to do is go ahead and stitch that right directly onto your stabilizer. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch that out. And I'm going to change the camera here so you can see what I'm stitching. And you can see that it's stitching that directly onto the stabilizer. Once that's stitched onto the stabilizer, you're going to go ahead and take your piece of your fabric and you're going to lay that right on top of your stabilizer so you make sure that you've completely covered that um, placement stitch line all the way around. And now we're going to just go ahead, stitch the next stitch and that is your tack down stitch that's going to hold this fabric in place. Lenny's asking what size is the pump is the pumpkin for the kit. We're gonna do the small pumpkin in the kit. Um, you will have extra fabric left over, but the small one is the one that we're doing today. All right, once that is done, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and take our hoop off of the machine and I'm gonna just bring you back here to the main camera for a second and talk about some scissors. <clears throat> so what we wanna do is we need to trim the outside away from, we're gonna trim all of this excess fabric off the outside. So OESD has some good scissors for that. They have the four inch curved scissors. That's really good for doing any kind of applique trimming that you need to do in the hoop. And they also have the six inch duckbill scissors. I really like these scissors to do all of my trimming. Another thing that OESD has for cleaning up any things in the hoop is this cute little pouch that has all of your essential tools in there. So there's some scissors in there. 
and this opens up and then there's the tweezers and then the little snips that I like so much. So this is another um, OESD project and it's great for taking on retreats because it comes in this little zippered case so you have it nice and handy. So these are also available at the shop. We'll put, we'll put a link in the comments so that you can shop there. But I'm just gonna grab my scissors without taking one out of the package. I know I brought some in here. I just have to find them underneath my supply of everything. So we're gonna take that duckbill scissors and we're gonna go ahead and trim all the way around. And then to get into these little, um, these little pieces on the top, they're just these like little jagged pieces on the top. I like to use a smaller scissors for that to get in there. It's just a little bit easier. The duckbill works great to get around all the rest of it. But you want to be just nice and close to that stitch line. and it takes just a minute to get in there. So also what I did not mention is in my bobbin, um, because we're doing freestanding lace, I am matching my bobbin thread to what I have on the top. So I have the same pink thread in the bobbin and I can tell you that number here. It is isocord that I'm using and the number is 25 zero six that's the number of isocord thread that i'm using so isocord two five zero six and again you can make these with any color fabric that you would like And also you can use any thread color that you would like. So make sure if you make different pumpkins and different fabrics and different thread colors that you post pictures of them on our page, our Pinecone Peeps page, so that we can see what you're doing with these fun designs. Okay, so now there you can see that I've trimmed all the way around. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change my thread color to the burnt orange color and that is Isocord 1334. I'm going to leave my pink thread in the bobbin because it doesn't matter for right now. Because you're not going to see that thread because that's stitching on the back side on that cutaway stabilizer. We're just changing the top thread. Okay, so on your screen, you can see that the um, orange flower is what is highlighted. It's stitch number three, and that is what we're gonna stitch. So you can go ahead and hit your start stop button and get that stitched out. So I'm gonna change it over here to the close up camera so you can see me stitch that out.
Now while this is stitching out, just to make things go a little bit faster today, I have already hooped up another large oval hoop so that way we can start working on the stems. where it does three of them at a time. So you need to do two hoopings of just the stems. And this is done directly on the stabilizer. So for that one, we want to use the green thread in the top and in the bobbin. And I'm using the Isocord 5934, so it's this nice green color. Again, that's in the top and in the bobbin. So now this is done stitching. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change our thread on the top and we're gonna go back to the hot pink or the magenta color, I should say. And again, that's 2506. So we're just changing our top thread. Celia is asking if you can do more than one piece at a time. So what I found, and you can try it and see if it would work for you, but what I found when I've done freestanding lace and tried to do more than one at a time is sometimes the stabilizer as it's stitching will tend to shrink up a little bit and then it might not be the same on the other one. So I just do one at a time when I'm doing mine. But if it works for you to do two at a time, Give it a try and see if it, I mean, try it on one and see what you think. Okay, so now what we're gonna stitch out is this magenta flower over here on the side. So again, I have the pink thread in my needle and I also have that in the bobbin. So we're gonna go ahead and stitch that out. While that is stitching, I'm gonna get the machine ready for the next one, so I'm gonna switch you back over here to the simulator. So what we wanna go into is the folder, let me back up just a little bit, and we're gonna find um, the 12928-14, one, that's for our stems. So we're gonna select that. It's gonna go into the um, screen that shows what your hoop looks like and how that design fits in the hoop. We're ready to stitch that out because I've already put the green thread in my top and in my bobbin. So let me, I have this machine over here. It's all ready to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and start stitching that green out. Flower is 
Alright, now that that is finished. We are going to go on to the next. And we can show you what that one is. So now we're ready to do our freestanding lace part. And we're going to do that in blue. And for that blue, I am using Isocord color 4410. So Isocord 4410, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to change both our top and our bobbin. So I'm going to change my top thread over to the 4410. I dropped my spool cap.
camera. Okay, so now our stems, the base of them has has completed. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stitch the detail stitches on the top. So I'm just gonna use the same green um, thread. If you wanted to at home, you could do contrasting colors or be creative as you would like, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the same. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start it again. And we're gonna stitch that detail over the top. So again, we need to do six pieces all together. So we need two loopings of this green with the stems. Now we're going to do the detail of the flower and let me show you what that looks like. So we're going to do the detail of the flower and our screen should look like this. So we can go ahead and start and again I'm using just the same color blue to go over the top so we can go ahead and stitch that out. While those are stitching out, we have a little bit of time left on each of them. So let's go ahead and do some more door prize drawings. So our next door prize is going to be another little notepad. <clears throat> and the winner of this one is Marie Hall. So Marie, we'll have this at the shop for you.
is asking if the shop carries the alligator clamp and the other supplies needed. Absolutely, Judy, we do carry those. And we'll post links um, in the comments so that it's easy for you to shop online to get those supplies. Yes, the alligator clamp and um, the little button clips, all of that stuff, they are OESD products as well, so those will help you get to that CD, that free CD as well. You also want to make sure that you have enough stabilizer, because just in the panels alone, that's six hoopings, so if you wanted to make all three pumpkins, that's a lot of hooping, so you might need more than just one roll of stabilizer. <laughs> All right. So now, we have finished up with our blue
So if you are just scrolling through Facebook today and you found this video, these, and you want to join us next month, you're more than welcome to join us next month. But if you want to see what we've done in the previous months, you can go back and look for our videos. Um, every month they just live right here on our Facebook page and they're also on our YouTube page. So you can look for us on YouTube, find our embroidery club videos on there as well. Or if you're just scrolling through and you found it today and you're like, wow, that's machine embroidery. I've never seen that before. Or maybe that's something I would like to try. Stop in and see us here at the shop because we have some really great deals on embroidery machines and we can find the right embroidery machine for you. Um, we also have our Super Saturday um, where we're offering 72 months interest refinancing that's coming up. So um, make sure that you stop in and see us or give us a call. We'd love to talk with you and find the right machine for you so you can join us next month. There's all kinds of different um, embroidery projects that you can do freestanding lace. Maybe you want to do some embroidery applique quilts or maybe just some logos on some clothing or something. Embroidery, the possibilities are pretty much endless and you can be as creative as you want to be with it too. So it's really fun to find all different kinds of designs and um, use them in a project or in a, we have in the hoop bags, all kinds of stuff to do. And then you can use those same designs um, on other things like adding it to a, uh, uh, like a baby onesie or a shirt or something like that. So it's super fun. Judy's asking about the stabilizer. So she missed the details at the front. So if you are just tuning in, you can see right here on the side that I have two stabilizers. I have Aqua Mesh on the bottom, Badge Master on the top. So yes, those are both water soluble stabilizers. Aqua Mesh and Badge Master.
in the bottom. I have that changed and I know that this is what my screen looks like and that's what it's going to stitch out, I can go ahead and just start my machine up and stitch that out. Shannon, so congratulations, Jeannie. We will get this to 
Eddie, I have not started any of the Christmas Village, so um, I'm not sure. I mean, I like the, the Badge Master because it helps to give that when you're doing like the actual freestanding lace, and I'm not sure on the Nativity if there's a lot of like fabric that's underneath of it. If you're just doing like where it's lace, for example, like this sleeve, there's no fabric in there at all. It's just red. I would probably use the Badge Master for that. When you wash it out, it leaves like a starch to help keep everything nice and stiff. So, um, if you follow along with your directions from OESD, they're pretty straightforward and they're good about um, telling you exactly which products that you need to use. So, I would say if they didn't mention it, I don't know if I would try it, but you could try and see um, what you would think if you want it to have a little bit more hold its form and its shape a little bit better, then maybe I would use the Badge Master. ahead and take our stems out of the hoop. I'm just going to pop that out. So we're all done. So now we want to do this one again. I'm not going to do that today on camera because that one takes a while to stitch out, but you guys can do it at home. You're going to need to do it one more time. I'm just going to set that aside for now. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to, I'm going to show you over here on the simulator, is we're going to stitch out the base. So the base is right here. So you want to look for um, 12928-15 for the base. You're going to select that. And what we want to do again is go ahead and hoop up our, this time I'm using the medium hoop. And I have aqua mesh on the bottom, badge master on the top.
And so now what I want to do is I'm gonna go ahead and switch my thread over and I'm gonna put the blue thread, which is Isocord 4410 through my needle and I'm also gonna put that in the bobbin. big jumbo bobbin that they have um, for embroidery. It's amazing. I'm not always running out of bobbin thread. All right. So I'm going to get this started up. And our other one just finished as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put my hoop on the machine. And what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and tell my machine I'm ready to stitch by touching the needle and it is going to stitch out our placement line directly onto our stabilizer. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch that out now. And while that's stitching directly onto the stabilizer, I can come over here to our other hoop. I'm going to go ahead and take this one off. It's all finished and I can take this out of the hoop, set that hoop aside. Again, I have another medium hoop. This time we're going to do the leaf over here on this machine. So I have my badge master on the top, my aqua mesh on the bottom. It's already hooped up. And I can go ahead and I'm going to leave the same um, magenta colored thread in the bobbin and in the top. So let me show you what that looks like over here. So on this machine, I am looking for the leaf. And for that one, I want 12928-16. And so this is the one we're gonna choose. It's gonna come up. Again, we have our medium hoop. And I'm gonna tell it we have our medium hoop on and we can touch the needle and we're ready to stitch that out. I just need to make sure that I have the right designs on both of them here. All right, so I can go ahead and get this one stitching and it's going to stitch that directly onto the stabilizer. And you can see it's stitching it out there directly onto the stabilizer. Now while that's stitching, I'm going to bring you back over here to this other one. So we have our base. <clears throat> I have to grab the right fabric for the base. And what I want to do now is take this base and I'm going to place it directly over that stitch out line. And now I'm going to go ahead and stitch the tack down line. And it 
doesn't really matter which thread color you use for this because this is all going to get covered up um, eventually. Okay, now that is done. So now what we want to do is we're going to take our hoop off of the machine. We need to go ahead and trim all this excess all the way around the outside. So I'm going to use my duckbill scissors and I'm going to go ahead and trim all ahead and trim out the center. So to do that you're just going to use the point of your scissors to kind of try to get in there. And you're going to do some little cutting. You want to make sure that you're getting all the way through those two layers of cutaway as well, but you're not cutting the badge master or the aqua mesh. So sometimes I just do it a layer at a time until I can get in there and see that badge master, just the shine of it. Probably one of the hardest parts of the whole project is just getting in the center and cut this out. all the way around it kind of looks like a little donut there in the middle so you're going to put that back on your machine and now what you see for your stitch is going to be um, the decorative stitch that's going to go around here and that again is going to be done in the blue so we can go ahead and start our machine and let it stitch that decorative stitch right on that fabric all the way around
now your screen should look like this. This comes up and this is the decorative stitch on the top. And again, this is going to be all done in pink, the same color that, that we already have in our bobbin and for our needle. So I can just go ahead and hit my start button and go ahead and stitch that on. Again, with the same color blue in our bobbin and in our top. So I can just go ahead and hit the start button and get that to stitch out. Alright, well those are stitching. I'm going to go back to the one that we finished. So this is all done so I can go ahead and take it out of the hoop. And when I'm all finished with it, what I need to do is rinse all that stabilizer off. But what I want to do first is just go ahead and cut that excess stabilizer away from the outside so I don't have as much of the stabilizer to dissolve. So I'm just going to just cut around and get rid of all of this extra. Maybe if you have a surgery and you want to take it to your surgery and just use some decorative thread. 
heads and go across the edge. That's something that I plan to do, but I just haven't got there yet. Um, just so I can know that from a distance, this is not a piece of batting, it is my press cloth. So the press cloth is again an OESD product. It comes in a package that looks just like this. They're fairly inexpensive. It's $5.99. It's a great thing to add to your toolbox for all of your embroidery. So um, that is also available here at the shop. And that too adds up with um, your products to get to that free CD. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this to the iron and you're going to iron. Give it a, just a good press. And I just kind of sandwich it in between there. And um, I'm using my Laura Star iron, which is a steam iron. If you give it a good shot of steam, it will just help to lay this nice and flat. Let me do that right now quick. or anything you can just go and um, use that little snips I'm just using a regular little scissors but the little snips that come in this little pouch the OESD pouch of your essential tools let me show you which one I'm talking about Here. It's got a little hook on the end, so it's nice to um, grab any of those little threads and clip them. And I like that it just has um, this little spring action to it, so it's not anything that you have to put your fingers through. Um, but you can just use that to go around your edges and clean up any like little um, thread tails or anything like that to make your, your project look nice and fresh and clean all the way around. And I don't have too many on this one. There's just one right here on the side. That little hook in the tip helps to get everything nice and close. It does come with this protective little edge over the top. So you can keep that handy. All right, so now this is pretty much done. The only thing that we have left is, down here you can see the fabric through this little hole on the bottom. So we need to punch a hole into this little eyelet right here. And to do that, there is another tool that I really like from OESD. And this is, perfect punch tool. So there's three different size tips and um, this just makes it really easy to punch those little holes into your project. So you can use it on a self-healing cutting mat. I have just a little cutting board that I grabbed out of my kitchen this morning. I like to use that because it's just small and we're working on a small project. But what you do is you just place your project onto your cutting mat or whatever you want to use it on. Let's see if I can do it right here. Because you don't have to hardly press it at all. But I have the medium sized tip that's in the end. All your other tips live right here at the, in the cap. So you don't lose anything. You keep it nice and handy. And you're just going to place that right over the center of that little hole. And as you press down, it just will spin. You're just going to press down and it just starts to turn a little bit. And I don't too hard here. It just spins and it goes right through to make that little hole right there in the bottom. So you don't really even have to press very hard. It just makes the perfect little hole right there to get through your project. So again, the perfect punch tool that is also available here at the shop for you. So once you get the hole punched in the bottom, then you can go around and you can start adding all of your panel pieces together. So you're going to add all of your panel pieces, just how it shows you in the instruction booklet. Let me grab that. These instructions are, are really good because they keep everything um, very well illustrated. You can see in the bottom here it's showing you how they use that perfect punch tool. And then on the next page, it's showing you how you're going to lay out all the six of your pieces. And then you're going to put your stems through the top. And you're using your alligator clamp to pull them through. So once you get them all attached, they're going to kind of look like this. And then 
um, it shows you on the base as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and start pulling this one through so you can see how I do that. So what I do is I start in the middle. I'm using my alligator clamp and I'm going to go right through this center hole. And you just wiggle it in there, twist it around a little bit so you can open up that alligator clamp. You can kind of see there that it's open. And then I'm going to just grab this little button and work my way back and pull that button through. So the button has now come through over here on the side and that's holding it together. So then I can just work, continue working my way right around through all those holes. So the last stitch to go around is this satin decorative outside stitch. And for this one, I'm going to use the magenta color. So I'm going to change my thread in the top and in the bobbin 
to this magenta color so it matches the other ones. But I have to wait until my leaf finishes up because I need that spool of thread in the bottom from that. So let's take a look and see how that's coming along. So there's our leaf. There's a few minutes left for that to stitch out. So I have a couple more door prizes to give away. While that is finishing up, <clears throat> So I have um, Haunted Night Gems. So these are a pack of 42 and a half inch strips. So this is a fun door prize to get this time of year for Halloween. And the winner of this one is Suzanne Hodgson. So congratulations, Suzanne. We'll get this one to you. Let's see what else I have in here. I also have a Kimberbell's um, The Trick or Treat Tote Set. So there's some really cute, fun little tote bags to make on there. And again, these designs you can use on onesies or t-shirts or whatever you would like. And the winner of this one is Judy Lambert. So congratulations, Judy. We'll get this CD to you. Another one, these are really fun. Remember those old slap bracelets? These are like the slap bracelets. It's got a little um, ruler on the back, but this is from OESD. So what you use these for is to keep your stabilizers all under control. So you just slap it on there and it goes around and it holds your stabilizer shut. So these are super fun. So the winner of this little slap bracelet is Lisa Paul. So congratulations, Lisa. We'll get this to you. And I have one more Kimberbell CD. This is me time. So machine embroidery time. It's this cute little snowman. And the winner of this one is Suzanne Growinski, so congratulations. We will have this here for you to pick up. So those are our door prizes for today. We're getting right down to the end. So let's take a look at our leaf. We just have a couple minutes left on there. So again, next month for our uh, machine embroidery um, club, we are doing the warm and cozy mug rugs and the mug hugs. So you can um, click to sign up online. We'll include the link in the comments so you can sign up there. Or you can stop in and see us at the shop, but it's $39.99 to sign up. You get this CD with all of the designs plus the fabric. And these are the projects that we're making. This is the little mug rug and the mug hug is super cute as well. So they just coordinate together. So they're super fun little gifts to make for the holidays that are coming up. And that is our next month's embroidery club. All right, I was looking at some of your comments. If you have any questions, make sure to put them in the comments and I can go back and read them and see everything.
getting right down to the last few stitches here. And we are all finished with this one. So I can go ahead and take the thread off of here, get it threaded on my other machine. can get it to go through my bobbin or my needle threader here. There it goes. And again we're switching our bobbin thread so that it is pink because it's the outside satin stitch so we want it to match. Alright, so now we have that all ready to go, we can just go ahead and hit start. It does take a while to get it done, but it's so worth it because look at how cute these pumpkins turn out. 
And I would love to see some done in that light aqua and cream color. I think that they that would be super pretty. So if anybody does those in the, that colorway, make sure you post pictures and let us see how that turns out. Um, and I mean, they're super fun to make. So I have made quite a few of them. I didn't even show you guys, uh, but here is, this is the one in the blue that I made. And um, they have these fun little spirals tendrils that just kind of hang off the side as well. So super fun for Halloween and, or fall, not just Halloween. And another product that they have from OESD that I quickly wanted to show you is the OESD battery operated tea lights. So there's a pack of four. These are LED lights. There's a cool white. Um, it's $5.99 for a pack of four. So again, OESD. So this helps you earn towards that free CD as well. We also have pixie lights, the little um, lights that are on the thin little wire um, that you could just have those inside of these pumpkins as well. So those are also an OESD product. We will post links for that in the comments for you to see. But let me go ahead and open these so you can see what they look like when I put it into that pumpkin. It might be hard to tell since this room is so bright what they look like when they are illuminated. But you just twist them to turn them on. can take this off of the my hoop off of the machine take my project out of the hoop again we're gonna just go ahead and trim all of this extra stabilizer away from the outside of our base Now I can take this and go and rinse that in that in that warm water and get all of that stabilizer to um, 
just melt away from our design there. And then once that's done, I can go ahead and put that on the bottom of the pumpkin. So it looks just like this and our pumpkin is complete. So that is it for today's class. I hope to see you all again next month in November when we do our mug rugs and our mug hugs. And if you have any questions between now and then or on machines or the classes, make sure you stop in and see us or give us a call here at the shop. So until next month, I will see you then.